The Ministry of Economy celebrated the signing of an agreement to provide Macedonia access to the Western Balkans Fund of the European Union. It's 140 million euros available to small enterprises and medium-sized businesses, including family-owned businesses and startups. This is part of a bigger program by the European Union known as Horizon 2020. Two weeks ago I gave a lecture in an event organized by the entrepreneurship network SEFE Macedonia in Stopanska Komova, the Chamber of Commerce of Macedonia. A government representative was there. She talked about the new Innovation Fund, a financing facility available to small and medium businesses and enterprises. Actually, the facility acts more like a bank, or more precisely, a foreign bank, since investment decisions are taken by a board of foreign experts. They evaluate the proposals submitted by companies and then they decide in which companies to invest or actually to which companies to lend money. The money is avail available for five years and ha has to be returned. Now, the government should be congratulated for its emphasis on entrepreneurship, small businesses, medium businesses, family-run businesses and startups. It's a refreshing change from previous governments. And the Innovation Fund is also a useful and good idea and several companies in Macedonia already, already made use of it. But this is yesterday's mode of financing. As usual, Europe, and definitely Macedonia, is decades behind the United States in terms of current knowledge, experience and trends in financing small and medium businesses, startups, family-owned businesses and entrepreneurs. These types of businesses don't go to banks in the United States. Banks don't finance these kind of businesses. These kind of businesses don't anymore apply to funds such as the Innovation Fund. Venture capitalists are not interested in these businesses. They are looking for the next Facebook. So new forms of financing, unconventional forms of financing have emerged in the West, in the United States and in the United Kingdom especially. And new businesses are making use of these novel, original modes of financing. Now, in the United Kingdom, for instance, last year, thousands of businesses succeeded to raise 1.8 billion pounds, UK pounds. Not, not a penny of this was from the government, not one penny of this was from any bank or any fund or any venture capital firm. How did they do that? What did they use? Well, of course, all businesses start with seed financing. This is money raised from one's own resources, family and friends. And then if you're lucky, you find an angel investor, that is an individual or a company, who are willing to invest in your next stage of development as an entrepreneur. Angel investors are usually rich individuals who put small amount of money for them in your company and allow you to develop new products, to enter new markets, and so on. But not everyone is lucky enough to have resources. Not everyone has family or friends who are willing or able to give one money. And very few people have access to rich individuals, which is the typical profile of angel investment. So what people did, they organized together in order to provide finance to each other. And this is called peer-to-peer -peer financing. So we have, for instance, micro-lending. Micro-lending, micro-financing, micro-credit. That's when hundreds or thousands of ten or tens of thousands or even millions, such as in Bangladesh and India, millions of people put small amounts of money. Each person puts a small amount of money in a pool. And the pool lends out money to entrepreneurs small-time entrepreneurs, bigger entrepreneurs, medium businesses, small businesses, startups, innovations, uh, innovators who, who come up with patents and so on. So there's a pool organized by very, very many small investors and this pool lends out money. Then there is crowdfunding, also known as peer-to-peer -peer financing. If you have a product 
that has social value, that has effect on the, ben on the welfare of mankind, then you can approach reward crowdfunding websites, websites such as Kickstarter. And there you can raise money to finance your project. You don't need to give the money back and you don't need to promise any financial rewards, but usually you do promise some kind of return on the investment. Maybe give away some products, maybe make people proud that they participated in the project by naming them and so on. So this is classical crowdfunding. But there's a new form of crowdfunding and it's known as equity crowdfunding. It's when thousands of small investors and not so small investors put money again in a pool. A pool of money, a pool of funds. And then there is a management team. They use the money in the pool to buy shares in new companies, in startups, in new projects, in new ventures. So many investors, each one puts a small amount of money into a pool. A management team of the pool selects companies and buys shares in these companies. And this is known as equity crowdfunding. Crowdfunding because a whole crowd provides the money, not a bank, not an innovation fund, not the government, but a whole group of people, thousands, sometimes as I said millions, as in India or Bangladesh. And then there is something called peer-to-peer -peer lending or peer-to-peer -peer investing. That's a situation where specific group of investors interact with a specific entrepreneur. The entrepreneur knows the identity of the investors and the investors know the identity of the entrepreneur. It's kind of an angel investment, but where many, many angels work together to provide the entrepreneur with the money that he or she needs. Now, what are the advantages of these alternative modes of financing? They're very fast. Money usually comes within a week or two. Usually no collateral is required. Rarely some guarantors are needed usually family or friends, but that's rare. In most cases, they are not needed. And the expectation of return is reasonable, and sometimes no return even is required. So these are very friendly modes of financing for entrepreneurs. Finally, we have something called vendor financing or purchase order financing. It is a form of factoring. In other words, if you have invoices from, that you have issued to your clients and they haven't paid yet, there are companies in the world that buy these invoices from you. They give you 95 cents on the dollar. So if you sold your product, you have issued an invoice and you are about to be paid in 60 days but you need the money now, you can take the invoice to these companies and they will pay you 95 cents on every dollar on the, of the invoice. These are a few of dozens of ways of alternative financing. So what, what can and should a government, such as in Macedonia, what should the government do? Well, it's useful to establish innovation funds. It's useful to sign up with the European Union. It's useful to have access to the funds of the European Union, which are gigantic. It's useful, all these things are useful. It's even useful to push the banks to lend money to small and medium enterprises. These are very useful things to work with the EBRD, with the European Investment Bank, with the IFC, the World Bank, and so on. All these things need to be done. But the government should realize that a whole new world of financing of entrepreneurship is opening up. And that this world of financing, these alternatives, will become the major forms of financing within the next 10 years. The government will do well to prepare local entrepreneurs to tap into these funds. The government should help them to apply, help them to fulfill the forms. The, the government should make contact with various crowdfunding websites and sources and sort of introduce them to local entrepreneurs. And most importantly, the government should pass legislation allowing local entrepreneurs to make use of these funds, regulating the tax aspects and the accounting aspects of using these alternative sources of financing and allowing local financial firms, including local banks, to offer their own facilities using crowdfunding.